The United States is falling out of love with fast food and is now trying to eat fresh. So now, fast food corporations are exporting their empty calories to other countries. Nuestro futuro. Hoy es el gran día. Compra de una Big Mac ayudarás a la formación profesional. The pursuit of the global poor is by design. You make your product ubiquitous. You have signs everywhere. You put things on television. The result is big brand food corporations filling up on profits. Meanwhile, their newest customers are getting hooked on high calorie meals and global obesity rates are rising. If you're interested in changing the food system or having a healthier food system, the first thing you want to do is exercise some critical thinking about it. Hey guys, I'm Shreen, and this Sunday on AJ Plus, we're talking about the new frontier of fast food. The United States is fat, but it wasn't always. Of course, you can be large and healthy, but there's a problem when people are eating high calorie meals that also don't have enough nutrition. The average US citizen is 23 pounds heavier than their ideal body weight, and the nation's obesity rate has increased dramatically in the last three decades. 23% of adults were obese in the 1980s. Today, that number is closer to a third. And now, the nation's waistline is expanding while the number of fast food receipts are shrinking. In recent years, fast food sales declined across the US. And while Americans are moving beyond the drive through to focus on farm fresh food, the fast food industry found itself with a whopper of a problem. Now it's scouting new markets to peddle its product. And Professor Marion Nussel, no relation to the Nestle food brand by the way, believes corporations are targeting the global south for one specific reason. Their job is to sell more food. They have stockholders who expect them to increase their profits every quarter. Nestle, PepsiCo, and General Mills have been going hard in developing nations, upending traditional diets across three continents. They've been driving up global sales from Latin America, Africa, and Asia through ramped up marketing and infrastructure over the past decade. And guess who they're targeting? The new middle class, the very poor are desperate to feed their families, and the holy grail of brand loyalty, children. Let's start with everyone's favorite sugary beverage, soda. The US of A used to be the biggest market for soft drinks. Since 2000, sales have declined. So beverage giants like Coke and Pepsi adapted their marketing tactics to win over children around the world. The soda companies have said that they're going to put billions of dollars into marketing every place that they possibly can. For example, they committed $17 billion to marketing in Africa between 2010 and 2020. So what does it look like when a food company spends billions in advertising in a new market? Well, Nestle went next level with their tactics and hired a boat to float down the Amazon River, selling junk food in remote locations. Because what locals really need is Nestle's chocolate pudding. The money companies have poured into promotions worked. Sugary drink sales doubled in Latin America since 2000. And now the world's biggest soft drink market is Latin America. That's a problem for Dr. Esperanza Cerón, who resisted the spread of fast food and fats in Colombia. Lo más grave hoy en día es que la inmensa mayoría de la población se encuentra mal nutrida, sea porque esté en obesidad y sobrepeso o porque esté más baja de peso. Ese es uno de los problemas más graves. Cerón has felt the wrath of the industry for her efforts. But we'll get more to that later. Right now, we're going to talk about how cheap, high calorie, and low nutrient food has flooded markets and created a whole new problem. People who are both overweight and undernourished. It's a problem Brazil is currently facing. Traditional diets of rice, beans, grilled meats, and salad are being replaced by frozen, instant, packaged foods and sodas. Currently, one in about five people in Brazil are obese, while the rate of overweight people has almost tripled to 58%. And this is in a country where 2.4 million children are still suffering from malnutrition. Public health experts say the rise of chronic illnesses, heart disease, and diabetes is reaching epidemic proportions across the globe. Type 2 diabetes is not a disease that anybody wants to have or that you would want to wish on anyone. It leads to blindness, it leads to foot amputations, it's debilitating. Latin America isn't the only place food companies are targeting. Asia and Africa have seen the wild expansion of fast food chains like KFC, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, and Burger King. Did you know there are more KFCs in China than in the US? KFC and its parent company Yum 
Yeah, Yum is actually the name of the company, have more than its fried chicken going for it. The brand has a certain prestige in developing countries because it's from a rich country, the US. KFC already has about 850 locations in South Africa, and it's expanding throughout Ghana, Nigeria, and Sub-Saharan Africa. The spread of fast food is exacerbating the obesity crisis. In Ghana, 27% of adults are obese. That's nearly the same rate as the US. So how are some of these countries fighting back? Many are curbing the expansion of fast food through legislating soda taxes on sugary drinks. Just like in some American cities, countries like India, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, and Colombia to name a few, have all implemented soda taxes as a means to reduce consumption. The soft drink industry's spin is that it would drive up the cost to poor people. But the truth is, they're the ones targeting poor people with their products. Remember how Latin America consumes more sugary drinks than the United States? The fight against soda taxes is heating up there. Cerrone's activist food organization is no longer allowed to speak publicly about the health risks of sugar. A government agency slapped them with a quarter million dollar fine and shut down their public health ad saying it was misleading. En nuestros teléfonos fueron intervenidos varios computadores de la misma manera y algunos de nosotros, yo personalmente, sufrimos amenazas en varias oportunidades en la calle y aunque nadie nos dijo esto lo está haciendo la industria, pues simplemente había una coincidencia clara y lo que nos eh, pedían los quienes son, nos amenazaban era que nos calláramos. But other countries' governments have been more supportive in slowing the spread of these food companies. I was particularly impressed with the soda tax in Mexico, uh, passed over everyone's prediction, and the uh, Chilean front of package label scheme, which sets a model for lots of countries in Latin America. The package label scheme she's talking about is pretty much what the U.S. did to fight big tobacco. Defendimos el impuesto a las bebidas azucaradas porque es la medida más costo efectiva que recomienda la Organización Mundial de la Salud y múltiples investigaciones científicas en todo el mundo para desestimular el consumo particularmente entre los más jóvenes y entre la población más vulnerable, más pobre. So, who is actually left to advocate for healthier options? Well, oftentimes it's up to public health departments or local governments to do the work. Teach people that sugary beverages are not good for your health. That has worked in the United States, so that's one way to do it. Another is to try tax initiatives to try to get sugary beverages out of schools, workplaces, government institutions, hospitals. So, what's the solution? We've already learned some countries are taking a stand with policy and education campaigns. And at the same time, we're watching fast food companies creep into more markets, promising finger-licking good meals you can have your way. But what is the United States' responsibility in preventing the export of obesity? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We just spent a ton of time talking about the global implications of junk food. I don't need a ton of it because I love to cook, but I do love a good burger. Let us know in the comments how much fast food you eat and what you'd like us to explore in the next video.